A little sunshine out there today. It was hot out there, Dave. It was after dealing with the rain for a few days. And I know we're not the victims in a hurricane, <laughs> you know, a rainy couple of days, but it's nice to see the sun. Yeah, it was it was nice to see the sun, but it was sneaky. I'm out there in a hoodie, yeah. and all of a sudden it's like training camp out there. I'm not good at checking for the weather. Yeah, I never think about it. It was uh, it was steamy, but uh, yeah, it was it was good to be out there. This is Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. As always, we got a bunch to get into today. We'll talk about big matchup this weekend: Eagles at Arizona facing the Cardinals. We want to kind of go Can through. Can I ask you a question? Are you ever going to start a podcast saying? We don't really have much to talk. I feel about. like I've done that in June a few times. Maybe. Like you know May, when we're like drafting animals and <laughs> finding things to talk about. But That's it is nice to, to have, about. you know, to this podcast comes really easy when we're in the middle of the season and you know there's a bunch to talk about. There is maybe it's may not as be as easy when they're good. It's not. Yeah, we're not talking about who they're going to cut, who they, who they might look to. <laughs> things pick are just up, rolling right now. Who they're going to trade, which is fun too. You know, yeah, it's different. It is different. Uh, so we'll get into the matchups, and we want to talk about Howie Roseman because, man, his fingerprints are all over this team, as you'd expect for any GM, but it, it really seems like his moves have all worked, which is pretty rare. Uh, but let's start with injuries because sure. we knew the Eagles came out of that last game with a ton of them. The good news we found out earlier in the week was that none of them were real serious, that you know, they weren't things that were going to put guys on IR, but now we're getting a clearer sense of what it actually means. Yeah. Um, you grilled uh, Nick Sirianni on Monday mm-hmm. about the injuries, and you followed up with a hard-hitting question, so good for you. Thank you. Um, and he, he said, I'm not going to give you any timetables, but uh, I don't want to say this, but I, don't, everyone should be okay and back soon and has a chance to play Sunday. Uh, they're not all going to play Sunday, but they're all doing better, and it, there's no long-term stuff i think that's the that's yeah. the important part you got uh, a couple games here before the bye not that you rest for the bye but right that'll help if, if some of these guys linger i, I think yeah and at the latest everyone will yeah i mean you'll be 100 percent healthy by uh pittsburgh I mean, these guys in, unless yeah. somebody gets <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously <laughs> unless somebody gets hurt against dallas or whatever but um they're they're they dodged a couple bullets no yeah the big it. one was jordan mylata yeah uh told us today that he felt like he dodged a bullet um it was a he got hurt trying to make a tackle after that, or during that pick six. Popped his shoulder out, his right shoulder. You can see him, gosh, skidding along the. Yeah, that was scary. And he made fun of himself for that attempt at a dive. It wasn't great. He called it a dolphin dive. <laughs> AJ Brown makes more of an effort. It never happens. Fair. Jalen doesn't throw it in the double coverage that's in the rain. It doesn't happen either. That's, so. that's fair. Um, yeah, but anyway, Jordan Mailata. I don't know. He didn't practice again on Thursday. Listed as did not practice on Wednesday, that a walkthrough, but he wouldn't have practiced if they did. What do you make? Do you, do, you, do you think he has a shot to play on Sunday? A legitimate shot? I actually do. Yeah. I actually do think. I think he's going to play. Uh, I think, obviously, if he doesn't practice tomorrow, Friday, um, then he won't play. Rarely, rarely do you see a guy, sometimes with a quarterback, mm-hmm. uh, a guy not practice Friday and play, but that never happens. And uh, But I, I, I feel like um, – He's got a 50-50 shot of playing uh, Sunday. Um, Dillard's back at practice. He thinks he, – I talked to him, and um, he said he doesn't He doesn't know. He said, you know, he doesn't know if he'll be, he would be ready. I kind of think he wouldn't. I, I kind of think he would. Nick certainly may have seen that way. Yeah. Um, I kind of think it would be Driscoll, again, if, if Jordan can't go, which makes the most sense. And Driscoll played well after – I talked to Driscoll today, too. Mm-hmm. I was kind of trying to keep him in his locker till you got down there. Appreciate that. And, and um, uh, he said, you know, he thought about two series uh, after the second series, he was starting to feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. And he did say he started taking reps there once Diller got hurt. Um, and he did, he does have a comfort level there. He says, just, you know, you really have to, you really have to get your mind in, in that position because he hasn't played it before in mental, you know, it's a different way of, of setting and a different way. Play one game at left tackle. At UMass back in 2016, before he transferred, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so um, they're pretty. They're pretty fortunate. It's funny if you think about training camp. Laraven Clark was their third left tackle. Mm-hmm. Coyote was their fourth. So, yeah, Coy- Coyote was ahead of Driscoll. I, I mean, it wasn't ahead of him because Driscoll wasn't even a factor there. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it's different in training camp because you have all these bodies, and he yeah. was strictly the second team right tackle. Right. We didn't even see him taking right guard snaps, although he could play. He has. I mean, he started games at right guard, but uh, he's just so versatile. I, th- I think. I think he's just such a valuable guy. There's not a lot of guys who can play both guards and both tackles. And you just Eagles act- have two of them. Sam Olive can do that. He can play center. Yeah. And and uh, they, I told you before the yeah before Driscoll got drafted, he started snapping the ball a little bit. Yeah, you did say that. Um, I'm not sure I'd want. I think you know the Eagles are pretty well set with <laughs> yeah, the backup. Yeah, they don't need it, but they have Cam Jurgens. But uh, you know, Big V is one of those guys, mm-hmm. and he's really parlayed that ability into a lucrative career, a long career, yeah. Super Bowl champ. So uh, they're lucky they have Driscoll. I think I think most likely he'll be the gar- the guy, but. I haven't, I haven't ruled uh, Milano out. We'll, I think we'll know tomorrow. <laughs> I thought just a second ago you said you thought Milano was going to play. I, do, I, th- I think he will start. I, I think oh. he will start, yeah. Because then you just said you thought Driscoll was the guy. No, I'm saying uh, as opposed to Dillard, if, oh, if okay. he can't go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was really confused there. I was like, they can't both start. Well, yeah. you know, well you go not with... a left tackle. No, right. Um, yeah, so they're in pretty good hands either way. Yeah, and look, I, the the Eagles can't think this way. They have to try to win this game on Sunday. Tell you what, and look, the Cardinals have. We'll get into what they have on defense. They have some decent rushers. They they better have my lot of back in a couple of weeks because those. I mean, Demarcus Lawrence and Michael Parsons are coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, take it one game at a t- one game at a time. I would think he'd be he'd be available for Dallas. Could hope so. I mean, you don't want to get in half extra hours too. You don't want to get into a situation, though, where he, he forces it back this week. Has a setback. Has some kind of setback, and then you don't have him for Dallas. I mean, because if you get into Dallas with Driscoll, that's a problem. Yeah, but I would think I, I would think at that point, if it's not Milano, it would be Dillard. You'd hope so. Yeah. I mean, he, he sounded pretty confident. You um, need one of those guys for Dallas. Otherwise, you have to completely change your game plan. Agree. Yeah, but I think I think they'll definitely have at least one of them. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that Dillard's practicing this week is is encouraging. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and then the the other, honestly, the other biggest injury is Jake Elliott dealing with an ankle. Didn't practice on Thursday. I don't know how much practice he really needs. It's, you know, if, if he's healthy enough, he's doing a practice anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he kicks the ball occasionally. Um, and today that was Cameron Dicker kicking the ball um we'll see i that's a a sneaky big injury it, it, kicker injuries can kill you yeah um there's no doubt i mean he's hit so many big field goals in his career and obviously none bigger than the two in the fourth quarter of a super bowl you can't get any bigger than that um and he's just you know 85 percent career against the guy who's never kicked in the nfl and the guy he was trying out as a punter in LA, by the way. Yeah, he was a punter. Um, so somebody tweeted to me and said, Hey, can they cut Sippos and just <laughs> keep this guy and save a roster spot? No, you're not going to have a guy do two positions in his first NFL game. And then you have to find a new holder. Uh, that's he can't right. hold for himself. Bugs Buddy did that in a <laughs> Roadrunner. Spin the ball, run around, and kick yeah, it. Yeah, he did that. Uh, Roadrunner did, I think. But uh, we saw Dicker. I only I saw one field goal attempt. I don't know if you saw any, uh, any others. Uh, Looked like it was about a 40-yarder. He, he hit it with a lot of authority, made it. Um, but it's just a little different kicking in your first game. Yeah. Uh, so At least you're going to a place where the, the weather – Yeah, you won't have to, he's not kicking in last week's weather here. That would be scary. That would be rough. I mean, this is a, an indoor stadium. I guess it has a retractable roof. They open the roof. It's still nice out. Uh, you know, yeah. oh, it, it's going to be a nice surface. They never open the roof. No wind. Um so an ideal setting, if you have to throw a rookie kicker out there, you don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What's your gut feeling? You talked to uh, – well, you talked to Decker yesterday. What, what set, Did you get a confident vibe from him? Yeah, I I did, especially for – like, he just got there. He doesn't know any of these guys. Um, seems to have that kicker even keel to him, yeah. which you need. Uh, but still, like, as even keel as you are, going into your first game – is different. Sure. Putting in a pressure situation for a team that you don't even know. 
Yeah, we were saying I'm trying to learn names yesterday. But you know, I mean, with with this position, if he has a good game, if he makes a couple field goals, now he's got that tape. Now it's easier to get into a camp next year. Well, that's the thing. It's like this is a big career move for yeah. him yeah. or opportunity. He knows he's not winning this job from Jake Elliott. Right. So well, if he makes a sixty-eight yard, he would have to make an eighty-yarder game winner. I'll give him. If he makes an eighty-yarder. Keep yeah. him. I mean, Elliott won. You know, Elliott won the job because Caleb Sturgis got hurt. I mean, that was a season ending. Yeah, and then they paid Jake. Yeah, and he was a pro bowler. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying kickers get their opportunities in strange ways. Yeah. You just never know. I mean, David Akers got – he was in Washington before he came here. He got cut after he missed one field goal. Mm -hmm. They caught him. That was like a 58-yarder. <laughs> and then he came here and, you know, how, how would he make five pro bowls or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. And I think the all-time leading score in Eagles history. And then, you know, had a, had a long, long career, 15 years, whatever. Uh, it's it's a weird living. Like one game can be the difference between getting that next shot and not getting it. Yeah. So uh, you certainly hope to have Jake Elliott. And, you know, we were talking at practice today, like Nick Sirianni goes for it more than anybody on fourth down with with Jake Elliott. <laughs> so without him, I, he might he might go for two every time. He might, you know, he might go. Oh, for I think every they tr down. probably trust the rookie to make a few extra points. You would hope so, but I'm just saying he does that stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. Fourth downs, you know, he's going for it with, with Jake. So um, it'll be interesting, though, if he does have – I mean, there, there could be a fourth and 11 where you're not going to go for it and from, you know, 46 yards be a big kick for him. Yeah. So we'll monitor those two. Those are the biggest. Uh, Darius Slay looks fine. He was a full participant Wednesday. was back at practice Thursday. He was his usual self in the locker room. Yeah, so I – I wouldn't worry about him, but keep in mind he has left a couple games right. in moments, and Zach McPherson has done a decent job filling in. Played well. Zach McPherson might be playing well enough for them to roll into the stretch run. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves with him as the, the backup. That was a spot to me where I thought maybe they'll try to trade for someone at the deadline. Maybe they still will, but they're probably feeling more confident about McPherson these the days. The bigger question is if you don't think you can sign all the – 21 guys whose contracts were up at the end of the year is Bradbury as well as he's playing. And you say, well, we just can't afford it. Afford yeah. He's going to be, if he plays like this, I mean, he's going to get paid. He's going to look for a monster contract and you have Zach McPherson under contract. He's not James Bradbury, but can't bring back everyone. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Uh, the other injured guys, Boston Scott, Isaac Samalu, both limited Wednesday, both back at practice Thursday. I uh, don't know about Boston. I have a good feeling Sam Olive will play. Yeah, I would think so. Then Sue is the next guy in there. And... Yeah. But that's a big – we'll get to matchups later, but that's a big one. Yeah. You, you need Sam Olive in this game. Yeah, you do. Um, Kyron Johnson back at practice, so he's moving through the concussion protocol. Patrick Johnson. But not necessarily out of it. Yes. Yeah, moving through. Right, moving through it. Moving through the protocol. Patrick Johnson also moving through a little slower. He's uh, on a side field with a trainer, not practicing yet. That's the injury report. Yeah. It's the longest one we've had. They're still in pretty good shape. Yeah, they are still in good shape. They, he, The big one you were worried about if Mylotta was more serious, but he wasn't. And, gosh, they need him. You wonder what it's like to be Andre Dillard, whose whole career has been just bad timing. You know, Mylotta gets hurt. He can't even go in. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's got to kill you. It's like, there's my opportunity. And like, he'll be somewhere else next year. And I, I have a feeling he'll be playing somewhere. I think he's a good chance. I think, he can play. I think he's a pretty good player. I don't think he's as good as my lot of, but no, I, I don't either. A, I don't either, but an average starting tackle. I asked him, I asked him today, like what, you know, your whole career has been filled with like, you know, adversity and disappointments. <laughs> uh, you know, how, how, how have you learned, you know, to kind of, um, deal with that stuff and he said well, what do you mean and I'm like well getting benched and you know losing your job to a rugby player and <laughs> missing the whole season in 2020 and you know i mean it's it hasn't gone like a first round pick would hope it goes and that's obvious yeah. and um but i, I you know, if he stayed healthy the year he hurt his pack we might not be talking about jordan Mailata at all we, we might not yeah and they didn't i mean it wasn't even like they tried to put my lot at left tackle they tried to put Peters out there. Yeah. And you yeah. needed a little loot. Yeah. Yeah. Marched into that office and said, eh, you want me to play left tackle, huh? I'm making right guard money right now. What a thing. <laughs>
I still can't believe he did that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's about everybody. Yeah. Let's talk about Howie a little bit. Let's talk about Howie, my favorite subject. <laughs> Humble I, Howie. I wrote a column, uh, the one up Thursday, because it was so striking to me, especially in that last game, that everything this dude touched in the offseason, minus a few minor moves that didn't cost him much, has been gold. Right? I mean, go through the list of A.J. Brown, James Bradbury, Hassan Reddick. I'll throw Fletcher Cox they, he in, resigned that, him. in that mix. Kaiser White. And, you know, Kaiser White has not made the big plays yet, but he will. He will. He's a good player. Um, even, you know, C.J. G.J., I mean, at the last minute. And it was even some of the plays he – or the, the moves he didn't make. Like – they kept Jalen Hurts. I, and it, sure, they wandered. The eyes wandered a little bit. Yeah. They stuck with him. And they didn't overpay for a corner early in free and agency. And they, they gave him some, they gave him a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? They went out and got AJ Brown for him. Right. Right. But I like the cornerback position. I think the Giants didn't cut Bradbury until the middle of May. And that was the one thing. Uh, I don't know if you caught it in, uh, in Jonathan Gannon's press conference on Tuesday. He mentioned they had their eye on Bradbury for a long time. Sure. So they were just watching that situation very closely. We all York. knew he was going to get cut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't. They were trying to trade him. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I, I guess what I should say is we all knew he wasn't going to be a giant. Yeah. But, I mean, the Eagles showed the restraint Yeah. to not give up an asset. Right. Yeah. And take on what his salary was, which was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to have the faith that no one else was going to pull that trigger. Yeah, uh, I wonder what the plan B would have been if they had traded him. I don't know. Maybe because it was McPherson, but maybe, um, or one of the twenty-seven other young guys they had on the roster at the time. Because Stephen Nelson was gone. Yeah, they never, never even made him an offer. Never, never even talked to him. Uh, it it all worked out, and it's 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 rare. I think that like this, Howie's off season looked so good on paper, and it's lived up to that in. You know, just completely. Yeah, and there were some questions. Like, people wondered if Hassan Reddick was the right fit. I wondered. <laughs> Guess what? I wondered. He's the right fit. Yes, he is. That was the one I'll do a victory lap on. I didn't I didn't have any fear about that. Um, but th- there were a bunch of them. Like, even, like, the draft trading to get the Saints' first-round pick next year. Right now, if the season ended, they have the fourth overall pick. How about that? That pick looks better each week. Yeah. Andy Dalton. The Eagles, the Eagles draft hopes are resting in Andy Dalton's hands. It's what that's that should get him executive of the executive of the year right there. Um, I think one thing we're seeing is incredible communication between the coaching staff and Howie as far as what they want, you know, fit. I mean, it's a really healthy relationship, which I don't think he's always had, and understandably, with he didn't have it with Doug mm-hmm. at the end. Um, I don't think he had it with Chip ever, maybe for the first day. Yeah, yeah. Um, on press on the opener of press conference. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and when, when he was Andy's GM, I mean Andy was kind of still a GM. Yeah. So I think it's a really healthy situation. Um, you know, I think that the coaches have, have a real ability of expressing what they want, what they need, what the fits are. Uh, it's a really it's it's a cliche and they talk about it all the time, but it really is a collaborative process yeah. and it works. And, you know, I see some of the responses about Howie, and Howie's always going to be a lightning rod in this city, but, yes, he's missed in the draft. Absolutely. And some terrible misses. Like Jalen Rager, awful miss. I mean, Fireman Danny. Fireman Danny. You go back to Marcus 2011. Smith. I mean, there's been a few. There have been some. Every team has a few. Yes, and that's the important thing. It's like he misses, sure. Every GM misses. Not every GM has put a contender together despite that. And you look at Howie, I mean, he built a Super Bowl team. It was unorth- unorthodox mm-hmm. roster management, but he built a Super Bowl team. And he's got the best team in football now, five years later. Uh, so when people say the thing that cracks me up is, you know, he's not a football guy. What's a football guy? A, a guy that keeps building, you know, you don't have to be Joe Douglas and look like a guard to be a football guy. You know, you didn't have to play college football to be a, a football guy. Ron Wolf never played football. I think he's in the Hall of Fame. If he's not, he, he will be. And and he's a football a football guy is a guy who understands football and helps a franchise have success. And how he's done that, he is a football guy. Yeah. By any definition. He's not a former player, but 
you know. Yeah, and, it, and I think sometimes we get caught in this thing where we like watch. We we're so focused on the Eagles, we don't take a broader view of the league. Like look around the league. I mean, there are some GMs that look like they don't know what the hell they're doing. And yeah, sure. I think there's still some part of a weakness in Howie's game when it comes to evaluating the draft. Fair. But I mean, there are misses on every team and he's so good at some of the other stuff that it, it makes up for it. Like cap you know, management, yeah. cap management, trades trades are an even bigger one to yeah. me, honestly. Yeah. Very um, creative. His mind works. His mind works in such a, a, a fascinating way as far as seeing, seeing value, seeing picks, seeing the future and kind of putting all that together. My, my favorite example of that was this off season when he traded Jay Jaw for Ugo Amadi. Then he flipped Ugo Amadi and a, pick swap to get a higher pick i mean i don't think most gyms would have even attempted that because they'd be like well, what's the point but he's he's trying to squeeze the all the juice out that he can yeah. and he was able to flip and flip and flip and ends up with a decent pick out of it and i think another aspect of that is he has he has complete job security because I mean, he and, and that helps because that's fair because sure not is. a lot of the gms have that but and that allows him to to build for the future and mm -hmm. to take the future into account. He doesn't have to like, we have to win now. Like last year, I mean, I don't think they went into it thinking they were going to be in the playoffs and they, they ended up there, but you know, I think they were, he's building for the future. And if you, if you don't have job security, you're not doing that. Yeah. And for the overall health of the roster and the team, you have to take into account this year, next year, and the year after and, and, and balance it all. Where's the cap going to be, you know, all that stuff. And he has the ability to do that because Lori's been so, um, so loyal to him and and the other thing i mean how he has gotten better yeah he's just he's gotten better as an evaluator simply yeah you know, he just has so it's uh executive of the year is he's got to be the favorite yeah joe I, douglas could be up there too yeah you look at his draft my goodness yeah and it's funny because eagles draft class in playing a ton right. i mean it's jordan davis is playing a decent role Obviously, the second-round pick, Cam Jorgen, is not playing at all. Right. And Kobe Dean is a special teamer. Right. I, I guess Jorgen is a special teamer, too. But um, – A different way, yeah. Yeah, Nick Kobe's really a special yeah. teamer. Uh, you know, after that, it, they have Grant Calcaterra, who's played a little bit. Averaging 40 yards catch. Kyron <laughs> – It's true. Uh, Kyron Johnson playing on special teams. That's it. Yeah. And that's that speaks for his his uh, free agent class and, and – just the roster, this, this it's just a solid roster. We were trying to do our biggest disappointment Tuesday, and you look at the starters, and there just aren't any. Yeah, Howie, Howie Ball. Yeah, it's been impressive. Yeah. Speaking of impressive, you deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we've got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself. Shop your local Nissan store and NissanUSA.com today. I like that was like a theater performance. So my friend's daughter opened on the West End in London um, on Monday in Cabaret. Okay. Maddie Brewer. You might know her from Orange is the New Black and Handmaid's Tale. Um, she's a brilliant actress. And uh, so anyone who's in London, I know we have a lot of international mm -hmm. uh, viewers, listeners, downloaders. Uh, go see Cabaret. She, uh, Batty Brewer plays Sally Bowles, one of the female leads in Cabaret oh, yeah. in London. So she's uh, what a talented young actress. So go see her. Good for her. You yeah. know my feelings on musicals, though. Once my clothes were shattered. <laughs> so we were talking in the locker room today. Call me. Yeah. Have you ever worn glasses? Have I ever worn glasses? Yeah. Uh, no, Tom. I... <laughs> You had to hold that book pretty far out. I think it was might, really small print. I think you might be a little far sighted. I, I, yeah, I've never sensed that I've needed them. Okay. Yeah, I do okay. have sunglasses. I'm gonna. That doesn't mean much. I, I want to. We'll test that out one day. Yeah. See if you can read things that are close. Yeah, we could do an eye test. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right. Uh, matchups. Want to talk about this? Game day ready. Yeah, let's do matchups. Uh, the Cardinals are an interesting team. They're two and two. That whole division is two and two. The last place cards, the first place cards. They don't look great. Offensively, 
not a lot of firepower right now. And I mean, gosh, they miss DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. yeah He's a true. stud. And without him, man, the offense is just stagnant. Yeah, and they got there's they got some injuries. They don't have an offensive play longer than 30 yards this year. I was just looking at that when we when we started. Um they have one touchdown over six yards, one offensive touchdown, a long fumble mm-hmm. return. But one touchdown longer than six yards. Yeah. So I think it's a matchup for that Gannon can can really exploit. I'll um, tell you the trickiest part of this Cardinals team, and it's it's tricky because you can't really plan for it. It's the off schedule stuff yeah. with Kyler. All their script has been kind of bad. Yeah. But they're not running the ball well. Yeah. But once a play breaks down, it's actually when they're their most dangerous because Kyler gets out of the pocket and he runs around like a five year old who just stole somebody's candy and he makes some plays and he's still dangerous in that aspect. I stole MMs from, from the grocery store when I was like nine. And I went home and I felt so guilty. I went back and I, I returned them. Did you? Yeah. I ran around like Kyler Murray. I thought I was <laughs> going to go to jail. Um, but yeah, you're you're right. And uh, Jonathan, that's Gannon, been sitting with you for a long time. <laughs> it's, I finally came clean. Sorry, the A and P in Teaneck, New Jersey. <laughs> um, he was describing Kyler Murray, and I, like, is it, you can't if you're listening and can't see me. I mean, he he took his hand and made like a serpentine, like random serpentine, yeah. um, because he's unpredictable. It's not like he just rolls out and then mm-hmm. takes off. He's Mahomes all over does the place. a little of that, like just kind of running around like that. Yeah, Jalen's a little more decisive as a runner. I think so. Yeah, it's because like Murray's trying to buy time to throw. Jalen's taking off a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there have been some where he's done that, but not many. Um, That's the most Connor, dangerous part, though. James Conner's averaging three two per carry. Um, offensively, they just they don't have any firepower. They, I mean, the line's not that good. Um, what are they averaging per place? Four point eight yards per play. That is. I mean, the Eagles are at what six six one, I believe. Mm-hmm. So they're at, you know if that's and I think they're like sixth in the league. Uh, four eight is terrible. They just don't have explosiveness. Um, I just don't see the Eagles giving up a whole bunch of, you know, 80 yard, 11 play drives. And that's really all they've been doing. And they're banged up. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, that's my, one of my matchups here is, is Marquise Brown against the Eagles corners. But even Marquise Brown is hurt now. He's got a foot injury. Yeah. So they, they're without Hopkins. They're without A.J. Green. Marquise Brown is now banged up. Uh, even if he plays, you're going to have a hobbled Marquise. And you're going to have Rondell Moore? Yeah. Not great. Who's got 11 receiving yards this year. And Zach Ertz is, you know, he's got 22. The, the volume is there. He's got 22 catches, but he's averaging eight yards a catch. Um, it's a lot of catches. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he, you know, you're not looking to Zach Ertz to go down the field. Um, I'm they, curious to see what they do if Brown plays because he basically lines up on one side of the field. Yeah, he, he don't move these guys around a ton, and the side of the field he lines up on is where Bradbury plays when they're not when yeah, they're not right. traveling slay. Right. Does Marquise Brown deserve travel status from slay? Probably just because you, if, might, you might as well. You might as well. Uh, I don't know who else is going to make a play for them. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, Ertz is the only other guy. Greg Dortch <laughs> is our second leading receiver. I'd imagine we'll see a lot of Garner Johnson on, on Zach Ertz. I would think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is a good matchup for Ertz. Well, but I don't know if it is. Just because I think I need to see some better tackling from Garner Johnson. And Ertz breaks a lot of tackles. No, <laughs> um, no that's not what I was. But. Um, yeah. Did a good job on Hawkinson in the opener, his first game. Yeah, he did. So he did. Decent job. I guess that I makes say. sense. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, you, you think about Arizona having firepower on offense because they, they have at times. Yeah. They've always had Larry Fitz. You know, it's a, it's a different, it's a different animal now. Even just with Hawkins, it's different. Yeah. Absolutely. He's out for the first six. He, if you guys missed that, he has a, 
PED suspension, so he's out for the first six games. Six games. I'm going to look up yards. Per, I wonder if they're last in yards per play. I'm going to look this up real quick. Okay. While I'll talk about Hopkins for a second, though. Best hands I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude doesn't drop anything. And he's got, like, crazy long fingers. Uh, so, like, he <laughs> he's what you want in a receiver. He has to wear, like, triple X gloves. Uh, he, gosh, he's special. And the Eagles are just, I mean, they'd be I'd probably be able to handle him uh, to a certain degree, but their offense looks completely different without him. So two teams are lower than uh, Arizona in yards per play. They're four eight. Uh, Bengals are four eight. Steelers are four eight. Who Eagles play soon? Yeah, after the bye. Um, Bengals got to figure it the out. The Commanders are at four point six. <laughs> that is brutal. And the Rams, surprisingly, are 4.7. Hmm. Um, they did not look good. Did you watch them the other night? Yeah. Yeah. Stafford does not look. That's, they look like they have that Super Bowl hangover a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, they just don't look right. But anyway, um, yeah, it's. I, I think this matchup between the, the Eagles' defense and Arizona's offense is, is a really good matchup. Yeah, I do too. And uh, I'm trying to just like – See where they could get hurt. We didn't talk about Maddox, did we, in our injury update? No, ankle. Uh, did not practice today. Was working on a side field and watching DBs. He has a shot to play. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would think it would be Josiah Scott again. I think you're probably right there. Um, but it kind of makes sense. I mean, you feel like you could win this game. And they can't think like that. We can think like right, that. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And look, I'll tell you the like the, the the line in this game scares you a little bit. You feel like it should be bigger. Was it five and a half? I saw like anywhere from four and a half to five and a half. Feel like it probably should be bigger. Um, Eagles are, I think, a much better team. But let's. I mean, Arizona has some players on defense, especially up the gut. That and I mentioned Isaac Samalu being important in this game. It's because the. Most of the pressure from Arizona comes up the gut from J.J. Watt and Zach Allen. Yeah. Yeah, Zach Allen's pretty good. We know what J.J. Watt can do. Oh, uh, Yeah. Watt leads. That. They only have four sacks this year. Is that right? Last in the league. Eagles are first in the league with 16. Cardinals Cardinals are dead last with four. Interesting. Uh, Eagles have given up a few. A lot of that's just Jalen kind of extending plays, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Um, they're near the bottom in sacks allowed. I mean, giving up, I think they're twentieth or something. And sacks. something with JJ is always if he's not getting there, he'll he'll throw his paws up there. Yeah, you have to be careful about that because that can we saw that last week it can lead to an interception here or there. Um, it's frustrating as heck for offenses to to deal with a, a defensive lineman. He throws his paws up at the last second. You think you win the play, and then it just wrecks it. That's why they call him JJ SWAT. They do. He's. I mean, it's a. It's a real skill of his. How and, old is he now? You got to be close to thirty-five, right? Thirty-four. No, I don't think he's quite that old. Came out in uh, eleven, right? Yeah. He's thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah. And he's not the player he was, but he's still. Yeah, I mean his his bar was set so high, <laughs> but yeah, he's still a really good player. And uh, it was really funny. I was watching the uh, the Manning cast a couple weeks ago. And someone, a defensive lineman, batted down a pass. And Peyton Manning, with just this pure disgust, says, that ought to be illegal. And he meant it. Like, you <laughs> could tell that he really meant that. Yeah. That defensive lineman should not be allowed to do that. It's funny. He does it better than anyone. And Zach Allen's really good, too. He's really kind of coming to his own. Yeah. So it's, it's coming up to gut. They have their edge rushers are Marcus Golden and Dennis Gardeck who are kind of smaller, speedier rushers, whereas last week he had um, uh, Walker, Trayvon Walker, and uh, and Josh Allen, who kind of put more power out there. We saw that power from Josh Allen give a few fits to, to Jack Driscoll. These guys are smaller, speedier, so if you have to use Driscoll in this game, he's probably a better matchup against these guys. Yeah, I would think that's There are a few true. plays where, like, Driscoll is just in Hurts lap because he got put on roller skates a little bit. Yeah, I don't think these rushers are doing that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. Any other matchups? Uh Hurts against this that they can throw on this team. 
Their pass defense isn't very good. Mm -hmm. 23rd ranked in the NFL. Their corners are Byron Murphy and Marco Wilson. Not great players. And pretty much every week, the Eagles are going to feel like they have an advantage with their receivers going against corners. But I I think this one's pretty clear. And you're going to be on that fast track out there. You're not going to be dealing with the conditions. Right. And look, we know the Eagles can run the football, and maybe they, they can just say, hey, we'll run the ball against whoever. But I think they'll have a chance to pass in this game. They only have uh, two interceptions. Uh, opposing passer rating is 103.9 against Arizona. Yeah. And they're allowing 4.3 yards per carry. So there's a lot of matchups. Uh, quarterbacks are completing 68% of their passes against uh, the Cards. Eight, uh, eight touchdowns, four sacks, as you said, two Two interceptions. So a lot of good matchups here. Uh, I, I, I'm i very confident, you know, I think the only way they lose this game is if it's just a train wreck and three turnovers. Yeah, what's the, what's the loss look like? What happens? Yeah, I think it would have to be a three turnover game, um, you know, maybe a, um, a punt return touchdown against. There's, there's going to have to be a long, some kind of fluky play, fumble recovery, something like that. I just don't think they can line up. And beat them. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, they are. <laughs> they squeaked out a win last week against Carolina, who might yeah, be other win might be against, the worst team in the league. The other one was an overtime win against the Raiders. Got blown out in the opener to Kansas City. Lost by eight points to the Rams in Week Three. They lost seven straight home games. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah. So they came. I mean, it, you think of them as being that team that started off so hot last year, but then, man, they, yeah, they, you know, what the bed down the stretch. They lost four of their last five. Yep. Their last home win was October 24th last year. They beat the Texans 31 to five. So they're due. <laughs> they are due. Yeah. They were six and oh last year and finished 11 and six. So, Game they the game the Eagles really should win. So. Yeah. And look, you look at this schedule; they're going to be a lot of those. So it's it's a lot of pressure to live up to in a way that they're going to get everyone's best shot from here on out, and they're going to be favored in just about every game. It's a lot of pressure, but it's also easier than playing a bunch of really good teams. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. But there's there's a little danger in it. I mean, the Cowboys are three and one. Who's who's the next winning team they face after that? Not till the Packers, right? Packers week twelve. And the Packers don't look like no what what they used to look like. And then the juggernaut Giants. <laughs> they might still be. They might be twelve and one at that point. <laughs> yeah, I will take the under on that. Yeah, it's a uh, it's fun year. Fun year. Yeah. Got anything else here? No, it's it's it, it, you just look at the schedule and you're like, I mean, the Eagles could be a fourteen and three team. Yeah, if they take care of business, which they generally do. They've never lost as a as a favorite of five or more points under Nick. I think they're six and zero. Oh, um, interesting. Which is interesting. They they kind of take care of business. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get to Arizona. Yeah. So what do you have planned? Uh, I am getting. I'm, I'm going to miss this trip. You, you like Arizona? I do. Yeah. I'm getting in Friday, uh, so I have all day Saturday, and I'm going to go to uh, it's called Lost Dutchman State Park. Beautiful, uh, it's where the superstition mountains are. So, I'm gonna go to the, the one hike, looks kind of gnarly. It's a uh, like the it's a six mile round trip hike. The first two miles in are easy, and then it's like a rock scramble to the top of, of the mountain. So, I've read it's pretty tough, so I don't know if I'll have that in me, right? You know, waking up early after a cross country flight, yeah. but we'll see. If I, if I have it in me, I'll go to the top. If not, I'll do. The easy part of the trail and then kind of bum around the rest of the park. We, I mean, when, when the cars were in the division, it was the greatest. I think like the first seven years I covered the Eagles, Arizona was in the East. They were in the NFC East. Which, how? Which made no sense. But because when they were in St. Louis, they're in the East and they just didn't, uh, they didn't change it. And so that actually makes a lot of sense. We were such regulars there. Like we had our favorite bars. We go to Harry and Steve's in Scottsdale, which was Harry Callis and Steve Stone from the White Sox. Because there's Arizona, half the people in Arizona are from Chicago. Mm-hmm. They all moved from Chicago to Arizona. Like nobody's, nobody. Oh, like, really? So that's like the, the Clearwater area of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like nobody ever says like my grandmother lived in Phoenix because they all, they all came from, <laughs> from Chicago. I think, um, I think they're, they're, uh, their spring training, I believe both their spring trainings are there, but um, 
it's uh it's just such a god i love it i love how you you walk to your rent a car and they have the air on and the car running <laughs> and uh, you can just drive half an hour the last time i was there i, th- I think i told you I, I drove out to the tano state forest northeast of scottsdale out past paradise valley and it's like a 40 minute drive from the airport yeah. and you're in the these incredible mountains and and the rot and the mountains aren't just like they're like these jagged rocky you know what's funny chores. i was i flew to phoenix around this time last year whatever whenever the eagles had their bye week it was a little later than this yeah i flew out i got a like a round trip flight to phoenix for like 150. I remember that and i did a road trip i went from phoenix i went to saguaro national park and yeah. then i i went up into new mexico and gosh that, that was a fun trip one year i went up i probably went to the grand canyon maybe four times mm-hmm. and back then you could like you could drive along the south rim uh except during the during the summer but in the fall you could drive around the south rim you go hiking out in the south rim and it's just have you been to the canyon i mm-hmm. assume it's just yeah. spectacular and uh the one year i just stayed up there i stayed overnight and then just nice. drove down to tempe and covered the game not bad yeah so I'll be here in the studio yeah. doing the uh, pregame post game with the guys. And I'm sure I'll see some Eagles fans out there. It's a good trip. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's an easy ticket. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of Philly people live there. Yeah. That's a true. Ton. I know a bunch of people that live there who, who are from here. Uh, I'm sure they'll all be at the game. Yeah. If you see me on the trail, say hi. All right. <laughs> if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. That's it for Rube. I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you after the game.